It's a country of stark contrast, a land adorned with the opulence of a once vast and powerful empire. Now, more than a decade after the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia's figure skating legacy is alive and still thriving. Yevgeny Plushenko is a prime example. From a humble upbringing, he has chased a dream all the way to two world championships. And today, at Cup of Russia, he's the overwhelming favorite, with an unprecedented Grand Prix winning streak on the line. He'll face a field that includes the U.S. champion, Michael Weiss, who's also in line to secure a spot in the Grand Prix final. While the ladies are led by Yelena Lyashenko, the Ukrainian who's already pulled off an extraordinary come-from-behind victory in the series, but is now being hard-pressed by another American underdog, Beatrice Liang, the 15-year-old in her first full season on the senior level. Plus, the story of Arena Slutskaya. The former world champion was scheduled to compete here in her hometown, but instead is battling a serious illness which could threaten her career. From the sprawling capital city of Moscow, Cup of Russia is next. Check the standings after the short program. It is Blashenko with a sizable lead over Alexander Aft, who skated very well coming back off an injury. And then it's Michael Weiss rounding out the top three. He is trying to earn a trip. On the ice right now, the 25-year-old from France, Frédéric Bambier in fourth place. And obviously, with Michael Weiss leading at this point, he's got to feel like he has a chance to at least get to the second step of the podium. Dambier is someone who puts together great choreography with difficult jumps, and he'll really be tested here at the beginning of the program with the quadruple sow cow. He may do a triple toe on the end of it. Here it is, the quad sow. Beautiful, no triple toe, but just fine. man when he's on he has very nice artistry within his skating and he's in a good pace right now not jamming it with jump 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 but right here is the triple sow cow triple toe loop but that was just fine skating skills, transitions between the moves are good. Double axle, double toe loop, some sense of performance within his skating. than the Yevgeny Plushenko's out there today in male, male skating, men's skating. It is absolutely wide open. And here's the guy in Frederic Dambier who came in eighth at home at Trophy La Ligue in the last Grand Prix event. He's in fourth. He could stand on the podium. Do very well here. And you can say that almost across the board, Peter. Absolutely true. Uh, it, it, but what I like about it is that it's just... It's nicely paced. He's not making mistakes. This is what a good men's free program should be. Look at this spread eagle. Stepping up into the triple Lutz, very important for him, and that was very well done.
there, some great choreography. Spread Eagles, Ina Bowers. And a straight line footwork. At the end of the program, he's telling me that he's still got a lot of energy. And don't forget, this is a sport with an artistic flavor. That was nice to see, Terry. A quad and seven clean triples. That was as close to as you can, as close as you can get to a perfect program. His coach, Anik Gaye, and he was his own best audience at the end. Pumped up about what he just did in the free skate, and he should be in fourth place and definitely going to move up. Frederic Dambier from France will have his marks in just a moment. 199.03. The mark of Michael Weiss that Dambier has to beat. Here are the marks now. 68.52, 65.80. And add those together. It's 134.32 for the free skate. And guess what? The grand total, 201.55. And that puts Frederic Dambier from fourth all the way to first at this point over Michael Weiss. And he's got a lead of more than two points. As it should be. So Dom B.A. leads here at Cup of Russia. So here's Chang Jang Lee trying to make a run at perhaps not Pashenko, but Frederic Dom B.A., who's in second right now. That would be the spot he'd love to get to. Or Weiss's third place. Lee, the 24-year-old, who finished eighth at Skate Canada, but then came back with a bronze medal in China. say that he's predictable he's very strong but sometimes he overpowers his jumps terry when he approaches gets too high and doesn't stop the rotation here is the opening quadruple toe loop no problem there triple toe loop too close to the boards though those boards come up very fast and they're deceiving because the top of the boards is out further than the bottom of the boards out as in further away from the rake is yes so saying. you misjudge it about two feet out further than the bottom. Quadruple Sao Cao. It just shows how strong he is. He has so much strength in his quads that he just springs into the air. He's got to be a major source of frustration for his coaches and the Chinese Federation because he's, there's no question he's got the talent and he has done it before, but then he'll just fall apart like at Skate Canada. But certainly not on that triple axle, triple toe loop. He's getting a lot of big points for these huge jumps, or should be. Not that. Triple Lux right there. He's smiling. He knows it was a silly mistake after that strong opening. He basically eliminated himself from contention for the Grand Prix Final with that eighth place finish at Skate Canada. Shanko should clinch here. Well, he will clinch here. He's in the lead right now. Michael Weiss. The podium finish will definitely clinch and should see him at the Grand Prix final. Officially, with the men, no one is in as of this moment at least. this man has in his skating. He's certainly capable of stopping the rotation, but these are some of the mistakes that undermine what he's trying to do.
the ladies are set to take the ice in a few moments, and, and it's a wide open ladies race for the gold medal here in Moscow. Feeling pretty good right now. He's looking pretty strong toward the end of this. Taking nothing away from the great athleticism that he lends to men's figure skating. I think his choreography could be improved when you compare it to someone like Dambier. Had the wide smile right after the mistake, and then at the end of the program. That's the only two times we saw it. Chang Jang Li, the talented jumper from China. This is incredible to see the great explosive power that he has on this opening quadruple toe loop. Four fast turns. That's textbook perfect as far as the rotation is concerned. He stops it to do a beautiful triple toe loop, but he's just an inch wow. from the boards. It's amazing that he was able to not be distracted from that. Now, he's not going to catch Plushenko, but he's shooting for Frederic Dambier, or at least Michael Weiss, to make it to the podium. Here are the marks. 74-67. Those are high, 70.50, so 145.17, and Peter, that's that's enough. He's able to make it to second place. He doesn't realize it yet, and that's a typical performance from Cheng Jang Li and typical marks from the judges, and he's just now being told, I believe, that he's up on the podium. Li able to capture the silver medal here. So your final results here at Cup of Russia, as expected, Yevgeny Plushenko wins the gold medal. He'll pick back here in Moscow. It is very odd to be at this event without the former world champion whose hometown this is. Arena Slutskaya has pretty much owned this event. She has won the title at Cup of Russia five times and was scheduled to compete here. But just a week ago, she was forced to withdraw. She is now battling a serious illness which could threaten her career. It was back in July, after battling asthmatic bronchitis, that Arena went to the doctor's office for what she hoped was a routine checkup. It was anything but. Uh, I go to my doctor because I have asthma, and I go, it was like starting, you know, bad weather. And <laughs> my doctor said, Irina, uh, let's go check, you know. And I go to x-ray, and doctor there say, Irina, you have really big heart. I'm like, of course, I'm a sportsman, you know. He's like, no, there's something wrong here. The doctors diagnosed Arena with viral pericarditis, an inflammation of the tissue surrounding the heart, resulting in a buildup of fluid, a serious condition requiring immediate attention. This is scary because anytime this water can push on the heart, the heart can stop, you know. It would take three weeks for the doctors to extract the fluid surrounding her heart. Arena spent a full two months in a hospital bed, constantly hearing erroneous reports about her condition. My heart is okay. Everybody thinks, you know, I heard already, like, I'm broken my legs, I'm broken my neck, you know, my heart is stopped, you know, my heart working good. This water was near the heart, not in my heart. My heart is great. <laughs> To add to the stress level that was already extremely high, for the past six months, Irina was forced to deal with the serious illness of her mother, who was, and still is, awaiting a kidney transplant. It was on the eve of the Grand Prix final that she nearly lost her mom. Uh, my mom, for me, she's like my first and best and one friend, you know. Our relationship, I, I, I can't say we're like mom and daughter, you know, we're like uh, one part, you know, we're not two people, we're just one. We have two bodies, but inside we're like together, always. <laughs> Even with the burden of her mother's illness and continuing to recover from her own dangerous situation this summer, Irina returned to the ice for a comeback 
that would take place at this event, Cup of Russia, but days prior to the competition, her condition worsened once again. I go to sleep normally and wake up like legs hurt. <laughs> It's hard to answer when you when you don't know what's going on there. You know, it's hard. When she woke up, her legs were bruised, her fingers numb. After being admitted to several hospitals, doctors now believe her heart problems and most recent symptoms are a result of a serious inflammatory disease of the red blood vessels, which is a form of vasculitis. Nobody knows what causes this disease, but I can't see any other reason than stress. With her mother's situation, her difficult Olympic season, all the touring, the doctors think these things together caused it. If left untreated, the forecast for her is very bad. We are looking at six months to a year recovery, depending on how her body fights it. Nobody is going to let Irina die. But if the complications are not taken care of, it will lead to strong pain in her joints, and finally she will not be able to move. I hope, as the saying goes, where there is life, there is hope. I really want to believe she is going to be okay, because for me, she is the real symbol of sport. Maybe it will be better if I will take year off. We will see, you know, if, uh, because my health, it's the most important thing, you know, because I need to be a good mother after, you know, and I need to stay alive, <laughs> maybe like 50 years more. Her career in jeopardy, a full recovery still a question mark. Arena, at least for the moment, remains optimistic as she comes to terms with an unexpected, potentially dire path that her life has taken. I hope, I'm sure, I don't finish yet. <laughs> And uh, I know lots of people like me, and I think they uh, will never forget about me. Thank you, Peter, and welcome to the Bolshoi Theater, one of the most famous theaters and stages in all the world, where they're rehearsing as we speak, a place where the music of Tchaikovsky and Stravinsky have been heard by many. And Rachmaninoff, well, he conducted just over there. The Bolshoi Ballet has performed the Nutcracker and Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty here. So the Russian people have a deep appreciation for such a rich culture with literature and music and dance, and skaters are no exception. From a very early age, they take skating lessons and ballet lessons at the same time to help nourish their technique. They gave them a flair that was untouchable, unstoppable for decades. So their high achievement is directly linked to this beautiful, rich culture. The top skaters still to come. Remember how bunched together they were top five after the short program. Here is Carolina Kostner from Italy. The 2003 Italian national champion and she is only 16 years old. In sixth place after the short. Extraordinary flow, You're traveling three turns into a triple loop, very difficult entrance, it takes a lot of control. The fact that she is skating fast into the jump shows that she's not backing off. This is a triple flip, triple, ah, I thought it could have been a triple toe because she can't do that because uh, she was moving so fast, but she played it smart or safe. But her speed convinces you that she's going to do the jump. One of the necessities to have success. And there it is, <laughs> right there. Triple, triple combination, very powerful for her. And the first of the competition. Like Beatrice Liang, her international events last year were on the junior level. She won the Junior World Bronze Medal and the Silver Medal at the Junior Grand Prix Final. 
And we did see her at Skate America earlier this season where she came in ninth and really struggled in the short program, but has turned it around so far. Just getting down on those knees, pushing. Secure triple south cow. That certainly could develop more into a better position eventually. You know, attitude Peter position. and Susie, you compare to the two youngsters, if you will, the 15 and 16 year old. They're such different skaters with different builds. <laughs> they are. They certainly Carolina are. Is so tall and willowy, yet so strong. But this one has a lot of conviction when she enters her mm. jump. She's not backing off at all. She's really going after it. A lot of directional changes within this footwork. One way than the other, different edges, but it's slow compared to the rest of her skating. Oh, what a tough thing to go through. You Captain. hit that blade and it just stops you and bang, you're down, not on anything difficult. It's so disappointing after really holding it together on the jumps. And singling both those axles. A tough class behind the back. But I give her a lot of credit for putting down good difficulty within that program. The triple-triple combination, excellent for her. A silly mistake that shouldn't hurt, I would say, too much on the score. Carolina Costner, the 16-year-old, comes from an athletic family. In fact, she's the cousin and godchild of a Isolde Costner. Remember her? Silver medalist in the women's downhill in Salt Lake City. We'll check her marks here in Moscow in a moment. When we come back, it's the 22-year-old from Ukraine, Galina Manyachenko, who will take the ice in third place with a chance to medal, maybe even capture the gold here. In the Kiss and Cry area, Carolina Kostner, the 16-year-old from Italy, waits for her marks. She had a wonderful speed and tempo going into this triple-triple combination, and she relaxes on the second jump, doesn't rush it, and that allowed her six great rotation some good changes of direction in this but it's a concentration issue she's feeling pretty comfortable here because she knows she's at the end but then that happens you have to concentrate through even the footwork Carolina Costner now in the kiss and cry area waiting for her mark she was sixth after the short there was some space between all the pack of leaders and her, but an excellent performance. Look at the marks now, 47.03, 51.12, 98.15 for her free skate. That's the best so far, and overall the best, 143.53. So Beatrice Liang bumped down to second place. The 16-year-old leads the 15-year-old. <laughs> Now, the ladies' free skate continues with the skater who was less than three points off the lead after the short program. Galina Manyachenko from Ukraine, 22 years of age and the two-time Ukrainian champion.
Beautiful choreography, beautiful opening into that triple lutz double toe loop. Two Ukrainians in the top three after the short program, and she and Yelena Lyashenko battled back and forth for that national title for a few years now. And the problem with Galena, she's inconsistent. She can be brilliant in moments and just unravels in others. solid stretch in this flying camel with a catch foot showing great flexibility through the back. You mentioned how she can unravel. That's exactly what she did at Skate America, the first event in the Grand Prix Series this year. She came in 10th, but she's been all over the map with her results through the years. Her body position for that triple toe loop straight and perpendicular for the takeoff. want to show the judges toward the end of the program. She has so many great qualities about her skating, but you just it would be great to see her skate a perfect program just to see what she's made of. In third place after the short program, but a number of mistakes. Could we see, well, we've seen a seventh come all the way up to first. Can we see a sixth go all the way up to first? Carolina Costner is there now, but Galina Manyachenko. We'll see what the judges think in just a moment. When we come back, the skater from Ukraine, Yelena Lyashenko, who pulled off the upset at Cup of China. She's the leader after the short program. Looking for gold next, but first... In the kiss and cry area, Galina Manyachenko in third after the short program. Now her marks for the free skate. A total, when you add the technical and the program components, of 88.82. So, guys, it's 139.84. That's not enough. Costner still leads. Yes. So Costner from sixth up to first, and the 16-year-old still has the lead here. Thank you. Winning for the second time this season on the Grand Prix circuit. Remember, she won a cup of China. This one counts, though. 
that was a non-scoring event. So she picks up 12 points for the victory. And Carolina Costner, her first medal ever in the Grand Prix, she picks up nine points. And it's Galina Maniachenko who picks up seven. It's also her first Grand Prix medal.